Hello, welcome to our Martine Rose panel. Um, it's spring summer 19. This is our second London menswear panel. Um, and we are going to be talking about all things Martine and kind of the unwavering appeal um, or lack thereof in some cases, I suppose. Um, we are, I have to do a shout out because we're on this amazing set by Edwin Mahoney. So if, Edwin, if you're watching, thank you so much. Um, but before we start, let's let everyone introduce themselves. Barbara, if we start with you. That'd be good. Um, Barbara Guspini, and I have two legs, not three. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm Liam Hess. Um, I'm a writer and features editor at Buffalo Zine. Hi, I'm Leanne Elliott-Young. I'm a creative consultant. Uh, I'm Rob Nowell. I'm a journalist and global content editor at Farfetch. Hi, I'm Finn McTaggart. I make music and films, and this is my sister, Gloria. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and I'm Georgie, I'm fashion editor here at Show Studio. Um, so I wanted to start just by um, kind of getting to know you guys and what, you, what it is that drew you to Martine Rose in the first <coughs> What is it that you love so much about the brand or don't love about the brand? Um, Liam, I'm going to jump on you. Sure. <laughs> Not physically. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yet. Um, yeah, I, I really like Martine Rose and I think it's in some ways kind of counterintuitive because it doesn't make a lot of sense with my personal style. As you can probably tell, I'm not dressed in a very Martine way, but um, <laughs> she has that kind of Midas touch in that she manages to make things that she's always one step ahead. And every time I see the collection, there's always single specific pieces that I am drawn to and I can see myself integrating into my wardrobe if I could afford them. Um, and I think also it's just really refreshing after seeing a lot of cliches maybe, or a lot of the same tropes again and again, you know, like lots of these um, kind of utilitarian, the kind of crossbody bags and like military style vests with straps. And it's like been seeing the same things again and again, whereas she feels like she's always doing something completely different. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. I'd say. <laughs> and it's always fun as well, like the whole vibe of her shows. Um, it's always, uh, yeah, it's always a lot of fun. Great snacks. Um, great snacks. <laughs> and, really great snacks. Yeah, and I thought yesterday uh, had a really nice vibe. <clears throat> well, I don't, you, you were there, weren't you? Was anybody else? Yeah. 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 Rob, what about you? <laughs> I, I actually didn't like it at the very beginning. When she first came out, before she had her break, I thought it was a bit um, gimmicky. And then when she came back after having had her child and did the show um, at Tottenham Market, that's when I kind of got on the wagon. Because mm -hmm. um, I thought that she'd grown up and she'd kind of matured some of her thinking and she'd got on to a point where her, she clearly always had a lot of ideas, but they actually m made sense and became clothes that people would actually want to wear. Um, and now I find her really exciting. I mean, a bit like Liam, it's not my personal taste to wear it. But it's one of very few shows, in, certainly in London, where it seems really properly thought through and considered. And um, just like the ideas have, have kind of been taken on a level rather than just going, oh, here's one idea, let's spread it out across mm. all my collections. Mm. Um, so I feel like she's actually getting better as she's progressing possibly not what you think. I had literally the complete opposite trajectory to you, which is that from the very first season, I was like utterly, utterly obsessed. And there was one, I think it's like the second or third season where she was doing like leather kind of Western shirts with these lace trimmings. And I bought these tiny, tiny little um, shorts, which had like, they were like nylon shorts <clears throat> with like this lace trimming. And there was a bomber, which had, was like, it was just like a kind of standard bomber on the outside. And then on the inside, it was like white, all white lace and you could reverse it. And um, yeah, I just thought it was utterly genius and it was like my absolute favorite thing in London. And I loved that Seven Sisters show. That was probably one of my favorites. I feel like that was like her, her absolute best. Like yeah. hair, like human league hair. Um, and like, yeah, the ties were gorgeous. I think that was a huge turning point for a lot of people though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, it was yeah. gorgeous. It was, it was chic and it felt like what you were saying about the the fact that the narrative was considered, because that's something she does really well, is like, um, there's a certain chorus that chimes with her, her like sense of self and her integrity, and you can feel like she's, she's not just talking to a set demographic, but she's actually within it, and it's kind of, she feeds the lifeblood of that 
um, space. And then obviously with being at Balenciaga and then having this kind of like grown up moment where it just felt like every, or everything was in the, in the right place, but not, not over styled or over compensated in that way, but just the narrative was really clear and to be applauded, which I think everyone just looked, like you said, that, you know, from the very beginning, I've always been kind of, yeah. you know, applauding, but it was that moment where everyone was like, who the fuck is this? And yeah. everyone was listening at that point, yeah. But I thought, like, up to that point, she'd been developing, like, real clear, like, signatures and, like, mm. iconic pieces. Yeah. Mm. Um, like, some of this, um, the, like, wash on this denim felt very her, like, the big, oversized denim trousers, um, you know, her, like, version of the Carlsberg logo, the beer mat hoodies and stuff, things around beer mats, I thought that was so good. Um, and all this, like, Steve, Steve Terry, right, the rave flyers. Mm. Um, but then at that point, I felt like, you know, she went off to Balenciaga and suddenly her, like, signatures were now replaced with the kind of Vetmont signatures. And I saw with this particular collection, it just looked like a kind of, watered down version of Vetmore. But is that because she's in, in that both those those spaces and now we're seeing because we're seeing more of like the, the Martinez I mean within other brands that now it feels like you've already seen it? I mean I definitely yeah. feel like she she in, inspired among some other designers had inspired that kind of Vetmont look in mm. the first place. Um, but now I feel like it's kind of I don't know, and like, like I feel like Gosha even does this look better than, than, than this particular collection. I think she's more sophisticated mm. than Vetmont. I think, yeah. especially lately, Vetmont has has become very one note and just relying on its logos and a couple of shapes that they know work commercially. Mm. Um, whereas I think she has a slightly more um, evolved taste level than perhaps you see in a Vetmont's collection. And I think, yeah, and sorry to interrupt, mm. I think also she has like a lot more soul as well. You know, mm. it feels like Vetterman feels quite cynical, whereas yeah. a lot of what appeals to me also about Martine Rose and the brand is this whole, it's, it's her as a designer as well, yeah, because yeah. there's something about her which is really likable and feels really authentic and unpretentious. Mm. And like, she yeah, is- Vetterman feels very aloof. Whereas yeah, exactly. I feel like you could chat with Martine on, in the yes. pub. Mm. <laughs> and it's that accessibility as well, like not just, not in terms of the price point of the clothes, but like this kind of vintagey looking collection. Like this is something if you want to buy into that like Martine Rose vibe, you can go to like secondhand shops or thrift stores and recreate like these this kind of stuff. That's what's so crap about it though. Go like, to it, North, yeah. it looks like it honestly looks like <laughs> you could buy any of this in Beyond Retro. Like not even good vintage shops in London. It's like and the randomness of it is just so like expected. Um, you know, having to again see like someone cut a jumper in half and sew two jumpers together. It's like, how many times are we going to do this? Um, and like some of this denim, this like late 80s, early 90s denim is just, it's just really like unappealing. And I think that to me reeks of the kind of like cynical, ironic take that Vetmore have. Um, and not the kind of, I don't know, like, Barbara, I'm pulling you in here. Save the yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I can totally see, like, you know, all the comments of where they come from. But I guess one thing that I feel it really comes out with Martine very strongly is she has, like, she brings out a very strong sense of masculinity, which, which has nothing to do with sexuality. It's just, like, a max, masculine energy. And it's actually pretty much one of the only designers for Menzo that it's bringing out, like, something that actually feels sexy, but at the same time mm. feels very real and believable like you can actually see like yeah this can be somebody that lives in that neighbor that's actually a little bit just more flamboyant in what they wear mm. and it's like and somehow it's like a character that really mm. comes through and i think it's the authenticity that makes it very very infectious and i see it also because very often when i would be at a shows i would be with you know international guests and they immediately really feel that they feel they are in London, wherever like she chooses to be, is always like areas that mean something, and the integration like it just feels so authentic and at the same time quite has this energy that you don't well, really. I was thinking all of this inquiry, this social inquiry, that um, in a way because you know she studied fine art at Camberwell, like that, that I feel like that's part of her dialogue as well, and why she does things um, so well, and perhaps. 
the realism that we're seeing here, i.e. that could, as we said, it could be somebody who has, you know, spent a couple of times in their grandpa's wardrobe and then gone to a vintage, you know, it's like, it feels like almost like too honest in that space. Like this could be like the streets of Norfolk as well, like, you know, that kind of yeah. carny kind of, <laughs> and it's like, is, is, is now her work in a space where she's, it's, it's about social inquiry? Mm. It's something like, I've struggled it? with in collections before this one, actually, mm. when she did the one in the hiking, wall yeah. climbing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, some of those jackets, I thought they were lovely, but they looked exactly like something you could buy in Millet. Yeah. And it was hard to see exactly what the difference mm. was, because it's not like it's made in a really fine luxury fabric. Well, there was these leather, the, the leather <sighs> trousers with the poppers, which are almost like the kind of, um, those streetwear, um, you know, ripaways, the kappa kind of, I think one of the collections had that on the, along the side. So I think there's some like subtle re appropriations or interpretations in there. But I think at first, I'd, I'd like to kind of spend some time and like inquire more like actually with the fabrics. I know that there's a lot of process involved to get the garments to look and mm. be in this state. Mm. Like, yeah, do you think she, it... She said she washed them multiple times yeah. so they'd feel and look worn and used and loved. Mm. And I wonder if that's part of the, um, like her observation is that perhaps you know, we need to see them, you know, up close, touch them, you know, look at them and spend more time with them almost? Like, is this the best way to be reading them? Okay. And even in the show, because it's so bloody fast, isn't it? Yeah. I do think everyone should be allowed to go and have a real good feel of everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I would think that bit's missing, like a, like a sensory touch moment, like post-show, <laughs> everyone kind of like in there. Because it's really important when yeah, you... Yeah, you, totally. yeah, Yeah, no, I was just going to say as well that I think um, maybe what elevates it slightly or gives it that additional edge is like she's so good at branding and like mm -hmm. I see people like around wearing like the logos t-shirts you know she did the like really hilarious like MTV logo but done as like Marty Rose mm -hmm. when you had like yeah. the big belt buckles or the like tie pins with the like mm. script written on the amazing it. jump with the popper with the nappy <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and, yeah. and that's just really amazing because she, she can really do it without being so obvious mm. yeah. i think it's one thing that makes people feel mm. very comfortable actually wearing the name across even people that normally don't wear logos at mm. all but with her just doesn't feel like something just been slapped onto. Yeah, it's kind of almost, again, like woven into it. Yeah. Like it, it could look like someone's working in a hardware store with their name on there. <laughs> yes, it's like, it feels, it feels like it's, it's always been a part of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was supposed to be there. Yeah. But what that's that script yeah. that she has was literally taken from a vintage T-shirt. She just liked the, the writing. Yeah. And then she just put that as her logo. So in a way, you're absolutely spot on. It's already picked from something that was existing in like yeah. a second hand or vintage or workplace environment. But so I'm interested, this kind of had this, there's, the Seven Sisters one was so successful, it was so interesting and innovative and it was in the community and people really thrived off having to go all the way to what feels like Middle Earth sometimes <laughs> to see this. And last night's show kind of had those similar components in St. Leonard Square and more so than I think than the rock climbing place. Mm. Um, it was in the middle of a cul-de-sac and all the um, families are coming out to watch, mm. watch the show. So where's the disconnect there? Why was the seven, is it purely just the clothes this time that are letting us, letting you down? I really liked the show last night. I thought it was really good. Um, I think the, aesthetically it's maybe harder to get on board with the clothes because as, as Finn says, they do have a very, very vintagey look. But um, I also think that when you see all that stuff in the showroom and it's pulled apart, and like some of the jackets in it were yeah. just like, I mean, they'll sell so easily. It's like mm -hmm. commercial gold. Um, so for me, I thought it was, I thought it was not, if not on, quite on the same level as the Seven Sisters one, I certainly thought it was one of her good ones. I yeah. I mean, I slightly different from you on that. <laughs> I'm really surprised that you didn't like it because there's so many <laughs> musical references here about like, 90s club culture, speed nightclub, drum and bass, mm. UK garage, mm. you are the music man. Did you just not find the connection? Yeah, it's weird, because I'm like I, I fully signed up on the Martine Rose bandwagon. Yeah. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's something that, to do with the way it's put together, I think. Um, I mean, I don't like the hair either. It feels like really vet moy hair. The, the casting's really bad. Like, I feel like all these faces are super forgettable. 
Um, and like, I don't know, it's, it's, it looks super trendy to me, and it looks like a lot of people standing outside of a, a fashion week show already wearing this stuff. Um, and it doesn't kind of like shout what, what I understand to be like her, some of her signatures. But isn't it that because what she's been doing for a long time has now become very trendy? Mm. But she's, but she was doing it before and she's doing it now. And, she's to it. and I also think in a lot of ways, I, I do think that good casting is almost like, I appreciate a forgettable face. I know the casting yeah. director will probably Sometimes blow, yes. like, <laughs> up at my comment there. But I just think, um, especially when you're, you're creating work that is, delivering this kind of narrative, like we said, it's, it's a borrowed, not a borrowed narrative, but it already exists in like the mm. real world as well as in the fashion sphere. So these faces, I feel like they could pass us in the street. And I, that's why I thought it was um, strong in a way casting for me, cause, because yeah, I could, I could sit next to him on the bus. <laughs> I didn't have an Uber obsession that is. But, <laughs> 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 so Professional uh, moment there. Um, yeah, I just, it feels like a backward step to me. Like, she has always, like we said at the beginning, like, been very ahead of the curve. This feels always, like her, yeah. like, really tapping into, like, a, a, a zeitgeist of now and kind of doing it in a... This is still going on way. now, like, why projects, you know, there's still kind of all these... The, it's, I feel like people are still responding like, to she look, I mean, shows, look at some of these yeah. early shows, like, that 2014 one. Like, mm. the wigs went nuts. Like, she, yeah. she was so crazy. She was, like, bonkers, bonkers, bonkers crazy. Mm. But because um, there's so the many... hair was, like, so fat. Like, these, this is nuts. Like, I mean, everyone... <laughs> yeah, it was... Like, and the lace and things. It's, like, way more experimental. It's way more, like, um, agitational. Like, even this collection now, to me, is, like, way, like, way more interesting. But isn't the difference that now she has a business to sustain? Yeah. Like, yes, yeah. that, is sure. exactly the, that is exactly it. And yeah. Vetmore are, like, the kings of, like, she business, didn't... business, business. Yeah, but it's, I don't even think, you know, that's, that sort of makes it sound a bit cynical, but actually, the, the, at this point, she hadn't found a customer, she hadn't found anyone who cared about her work mm. other than a handful I of did. industry people. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> We're going to buy more lace the, shorts. Yeah, I, can, lace yeah, I bought them. Yeah, away from the lace shorts. Well. <laughs> now she has, she has a, a very committed base, and for a young, she's one of the few young designers that really um, sells, you know, moves clothing. Mm. Um, and obviously her Napa Piri collaboration is super successful. Mm. So I think she's, she is in a different place, and she does slightly... I don't necessarily think this was a step back as much of a kind of taking stock season and I hope well, she did like launch further ahead again she did like a kind of greatest hits like lookbook the yeah. past one which, which even epic. that looks amazing which was like all of her signatures really stuff, epic. Like, probably yeah. the best CMX the world, yeah. like all the, it was like all of her best stuff um which I thought was like really good to see again like in this moment like anyone who had just discovered the brand from that seven sisters show could like look back through all this stuff again shot by Shana Osborne who she's worked with a lot and, yeah. and she's fantastic um but I am interested in that choice of doing that because I want to know if any other designer picked to do that kind of, I'm just going to bypass a show or a presentation this season and just do like a really beautiful greatest hits lookbook. Would it be as powerful? Would it be as punchy? I kind of feel like Martine Rose has this, and I'm not, I'm, I'm in full support of it, but I kind of feel like she has this golden ticket where she can kind of do a show, do a presentation, do a lookbook, do what kind of, she could do an Instagram live and we'd be like, that is genius, <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing, oh, I want more. But I think the, the, the reason she can do that is because she has worth. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I think also it's like seeing, again, what I was saying earlier about feeling like I'm seeing a lot of the same things mm. um, at the shows, I guess partly that's because of the fact that there is this obligation to be churning something new out every six yeah. months when like, you might not have something new to say. It's like, I still, you still see plenty of people like wearing the Martine Rose yeah. hoodies from mm. like, the collection, the like hiking, abseiling, mm. you know, what do you call it? Rock climbing. Rock climbing, Rock climbing yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this thing. Mime. Rock, but, <laughs> yeah, mime. <laughs> yeah. I'm charades. Yeah. Um, I, thought, I thought there was a lot of new, like, there was just before this show, it was like Kotweiler and Kiko Kostadinov, and I thought those shows were like singularly like genius moments. They were like so utterly original, so like driven by one very clear vision and message, and like really like sticking to your guns on something and allowing people to catch up to that look. I just thought, um, I was actually kind of optimistic after seeing those shows about, about what's going on in London.
Patty Martini is sticking to her guns. I think yeah. it's just that her guns has become really popular. Yeah, I totally yeah? And, agree. And I, I think, think there's a lot of styles that have been influenced by her to start with. Mm. And you know, now that everybody's jumping on it, if she leaves it, then it's kind of like it never belonged to her in the first place. Mm. So I think it's actually she's, she's right at this stage in time mm. to kind of like seal it. Like yeah. this, this is me, I've been doing this for a while, and the one that does it best. I like she's almost gone deep, like deeper into it because yeah. it is so um, transferable from you know, the guy in the street, the vintage shop, it's like there, and it's almost like, it's the difference between, you know, a live feed and then, you know, it's like, it's almost like an instant representation. And of course you can't begrudge her for wanting to make a bit of cash as well after being <laughs> in the biz for 10 well, years what, or whatever. Like. Sometimes frustrating thing about British, specifically London fashion, I think, is that we all love somebody when they're, they're kind of fresh out the box. Yes, levels. exactly. And then as soon as they start to make money and, and, mm. and establish signatures and build a fan base, we, we jump on them and say they're selling out. And, and that's, I think yeah. we did it with Craig, I think people did it with JW Of Anderson. course. It it's with... a massive issue with London that, yeah. you know, it's like small birds with really fast heartbeats that all yeah. are exhausted and fucking die. Yeah. And the, the, you but, know, and that's, that's just what I think London is. And also but, designers get really confused into like trying many, many, many different things that don't really belong to them necessarily, just mm. to keep everybody interested into them being experimenting rather than often building in what has become very successful about what they do. And often that's what it drives them out of business. So, mm. that, and uh, understand that like it can't really, if, it can't really please when you're expecting to see that continuous challenging uh, and, and some of the designers do offer them, but very often that's how they can then seal the business and keep on going because then they develop the customer base and that's a way to just, you know, keep but, them in mind. As we're hearing, perhaps the customer base will not be as, in, as engaged and I think that's a... That's actually a problem with like the fashion system rather than it depends just the specific cost. to London. It's a difficult one to keep, yeah. keep engaged, keep you know, that, that big innovation, like, to be innovative and to be like, That's part of the zeitgeist. customer. Well, yeah. Because the general customer doesn't really care mm. about that. Doesn't care about the innovation. It's the kudos and the kind of marketing. Yeah, but I mean, energy. they go more about shape and, you know, who they've seen wearing and also how it fits and if it's the mood of their life. Product placement. No, yeah. also, <laughs> part of it, but not yeah, necessarily. Yeah. It might be who else in their school or, you know, their group of friends. Mm. But obviously for us, like in fashion, we look in a different way, so we need that extra. Mm. But I do feel, feel like it's, a, again, like it's a smaller um, step between the consumer and the, the demographic and us having a conversation here. Like, yeah, young sure. kids now are buying, buying, you know, real, can I say real fashion? Yeah, <laughs> you know, like, as opposed to the fast, fast fashion spaces, yeah. because they're... Again, there, there's, they, they do, there are like complex narratives that these young individuals have. I mean, they, now if you speak to you know, these fashion kids, they've got, you know, they talk about it in a really deep intellectual way. I mean, they'll give you like product codes as a stylist mm -hmm. would rather than just being honest with You know, yeah, sure. spring, summer 14, they'll give you all the description that like, these individuals are obsessing about. But I feel they get a bit more obsessed with the designer and they don't really require from them to reinvent the wheel so much. Like, if they're into Ralph, they're into Ralph. If they're into Martin, they're into Martin. Yeah. If they're into Craig, they're into Craig. Like, there's a bit of devotion, like, in that mm. sense, especially in the youth when they get into one designer. Could be Yoji, could be Com, whatever mm. that one is. And they're actually way more um, forgiven and just a, kind of, like, willing to go with their journey than maybe we are. Because obviously we look at it from a more like insider like perspective thing, and I think it takes a little bit more I like. Think it's canny for designers to embrace that and, and create products that become a bit cult. Like I mm. think that is what Martine does with, so with her it? sweats and her denim yeah. and her outerwear, and what Craig does with his workwear is that actually they they kind of invite you to become part of this cult thing, and, they, and you get into that thing of like you know it's always kind of the same. And you buy into that, and if, yes. you know it's, they don't flip it every season, which I think is really alienating for customers. Do you think then this is a step for like Martine of of just being inside her inside her moment, and then the next iteration of it will be exploring that again? I, mean, I, I personally felt like this was a slight nudge forward. It's a yeah. slight move away from the kind of technical sportswear thing that she's been doing. For mm. since I completely since agree. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. It's, it is something that feels a little uncomfortable like that. You're like, this looks like vintage, as, as you said. Mm. But it wasn't, it isn't, I, to, my, to my mind, it wasn't what I know from, from Martine. It was a slight evolving of her codes. 
I think it's it, not evolving in the direction. It just of your life. it looks exactly <laughs> yeah. like Balenciaga and Vetmar. I'm sorry, like some of these jackets, some of these jeans, but don't the way you know, it's styled, she was the hair. Performing Demna like, for so long. Yeah. Um, I mean, she is Balenciaga, basically. She, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the teen is. <laughs> sure. No, but I saw it was way, the the way that it was done. I suppose at that Seven Sisters show was like way more of a like gentle mixing together of the, both those things. This mm. this feels to me very much like I, like those belts. I'm sure they use those like exact belts for the Vetmans like family show. Um, it's those it's those exact like jeans as well the like completely straight leg Levi's that are like washed out um, there's coats in there that are literally just Balenciaga coats like they're black there's like a black one in the um, in the show that uh, going back a bit uh, the other direction <laughs> But like, yeah. and so, so this, like a lot of this stuff as well, like super, like reminds me of Gosha stuff. Um, you you know, like real run, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like very like young, like techno-y, like East European. Um, yeah, quite Berlin, isn't it? It's so Berlin. Yeah. It's so yeah. Berlin. I kind of see that, that, but when we were talking, she was just like, this to me is like a bit kind of geezery 90s, bit rough and ready. It's like Krusty Raver to me. Yeah, yeah. I think he can only exist. It's, it's like Norfolk Raver. Yeah. I've definitely slogged some of these boys once. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, uh, I'd do it again with that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, this black coat here is just like a Balenciaga coat. But also, I. The shapes, all the shapes are like, it's the same exact, like vet more Balenciaga. I would have said that coat's right. more Martine than I would Balenciaga. Mm. Why? So, no, her coat is like the fur coat with the patches on, or like the. Um, but we've seen that. Or she would we've do like a before. big camo trench with all those flyers on. Like it was like so fab. She did but have some of the flyer stuff in here actually. There were a few little nuggets of. Yeah, it was a showman's show, pass, wasn't it? It's just the top uh, right up there. Yeah. It's like the fourth look, I think. But to me, that's kind of irrelevant anyway because there's such a distinctive spirit in this collection, or it's like mm. it's so. Whether or not there are like single pieces that bear some resemblance to pieces that she might have worked on at Balenciaga, it doesn't matter to me really because it's like it's all about this like rave culture. You know, she approaches it more like a researcher or something than mm. I don't know than a pattern cutter or whatever. It's like mm. it's coming. It's really like plumbing the depths of this like weird kind of countercultural moment mm. um, that's not going to be a reference point for Balenciaga. And I'm saying that as someone who's kind of looking at this objectively, not as a potential customer, like as in why I find it interesting. And that's because of that like level of, of research that's clearly gone into it. Mm. And that kind of backstory, which I think gives it mm. something additional that Balenciaga doesn't necessarily yeah, have. And I think if anyone can make um, a collection based on like inspiration, like directly responding to something, then it's her. Mm. I think she's almost allowed to Oh do my God, that. look, it's this show. It's just this show. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, so you're not a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so upsetting for me, like, because I'm like such a huge fan of Martine's, like, uh, honestly. Do you, but just, just, do you just want to This is like this in is a wild so, moment again? This like, is as so a, a utterly commercial right now, and so many people are buying it. I just feel like that's, it's just like, everyone's moving into the center around this one particular look. Where would you like to see her go? <laughs> you want those lace pants again, don't you, darling? <laughs> lace and yeah. wigs, like, I mean, really I also gay, but, like, lace, yeah. definitely, like, lace and wigs and, like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I want that, too. What I do really you think, Gloria? I <laughs> yeah. I, but I do, I, I, I'm enjoying this. Mm. I think it feels... Um, and I agree that everyone's jumping on the bandwagon and moving towards that look, but it's her look, so why should she... Give yeah, exactly. She established that look. She defined yeah. it. Everyone came to it. It's been commercially huge. And I think this should, is... should be totally mm. insane to go, oh, well, everyone likes this now. Everyone's starting to buy it. So I'm going to go and do saris. <laughs> and I think I mean, that's... that's yeah. 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 I do. Is, that, is that... Is that's, yeah. a, that's a hot oh, tip. Oh, guys, uh, <laughs> yeah, watch good. out. But I think, um, I think this, is, this is her in her bed, you know? Yeah. And saying, this is me. And you can see all the references, but this is me. I own this space. And I'm really excited about the next moment. 
Yeah, and there are dozens of designers who are jumping on this, but but it's really transparent with Gibson that they are just doing it because it's trendy. Yeah. This is lived, Mm. this is something she's lived through. This is her real experiences. It's almost a reminder, like, don't ever forget that I uh, I started all this. I did this. That's what I think as well. It's like, you know, she's comfortable. It was based on, there was kind of references in there that you couldn't make up if you hadn't been there. Yeah. The music she used and the. Some of the styling, I was like, it, it's not just jumping on a trend. It's like, I actually did this. I was there. Mm-hmm. This is what it looked like. And almost if we are like looking at the Balenciaga in this, the Balenciaga one, they've got dads holding babies. And compared to what we saw last night with Martine, with literal children from That's the what neighborhood I just said, running actual, around. Yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, just watching this show. I it's, totally get visually, there's some overlap, but the authenticity, I know that's so lame, I hate myself using that word, but like... Yeah. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I said it earlier, I just kind of cringed internally. Yeah. Yeah. There's such a do moment that. Yeah. We seem to be experiencing this moment of like really like, um, I don't know, because fashion's become such a like thing that like everyone is, has some kind of level of knowledge about now because mm. it's this massive commercial industry, it's not the only creative yeah, industry yeah. that's like consistently growing. So there's this, there's this attempt to kind of like normalize fashion into like, um, you know, everyone's lives um, that's going on with like, with like bringing like kids in and like playing around with like how normal it is and like looking at like real life and like these exact, like the exactitudes images of like real people. Mm. And because we're so like on our phones and like actually not interacting with each other properly at all, we're like, trying to get a sense of like reality and normality out of stuff at the moment and it feels like kind of like jarring to me because in the background there's like it's like this gigantic industry that's just like of this behemoth Mm. like demolishing the world and I don't know I just I just see this I don't know that's what I mean about this (laughs) yeah like how now you know the you know, you can have an encyclopedic knowledge of fashion just by owning, you know, the tool that is your mobile phone. Mm. Like, it's all there. We live mm. in an image-rich society and mm. that's like, you can, you know, knowledge is out there for you to kind of harvest. And yeah. it's not coveted. It's not, you know, you go to a show and the front row is product placement influencers. And then, mm. you know, the buyers have got a, you know, it's, it's just like a diff, totally different landscape. I just it's, want, like, open fantasy and, back again. Yeah. Like, complete, like, fantasy and imagination. Because I feel like that will just kind of lift people out a bit of, like... But isn't that, then, um, what uh, Charles Jeffrey? I'll sorry, I'm going to quickly... Oh, no. Do you, do you, no, you just said, no, we talked no, about that. That's a real lack of imagination. Don't, don't poke the bear, yeah. I know, I know. <laughs> no, but we talk about fantasy and imagination. Well, and, all his references are yeah, fashion, yeah. Fa- are like fantasies. And I think that's the two, you know, spaces. Like, there's fantasy, imagination, and kind of that regalia. Then there's this polarised normality. And there's all of the... I think that's a lot of tussling that's going on in the industry. Yeah, there's also... Like, how and where do you... People like Martina, like seem to be more interested like in lifestyle than fashion per se. Mm. And that's actually quite um, it corresponds also a little bit with Demma and 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 then yeah. Balenciaga and, and Vetamond. It's for them is for them it's about clothes, it's about fact, pieces. She's, she's and for my team it's more about well, yeah. yeah, so more about the lifestyle. So she looks at mm. it from that angle rather yeah. than really looking at what does this mean in fashion. But there's so many designers now who are like you know, I'd never thought I would be a fashion designer. Like, they get... People, people from all kind of creative ends are getting brought into it because it's literally just where the money is. Like, mm. I wouldn't be making fashion films if I was just, like, you know, completely independent of this society. But that's just where, like, you end up coalescing because that's where money is. Music, the music industry is collapsing. There's no, like, mm. independent film scene. So everyone gathers around fashion, and so... I think like there's so many designers like Martin who like don't even kind of hadn't imagined that they would necessarily be mm. fashion designers, but mm. this is like the creative outlet at the moment for people. Mm. To wrap up, um, what going back to what you said, what do we want to see next from Martin? What fantasy do you want? What what's the next? <laughs> what do you want? What do you want? Saris, we're really into the saris. Martin to do saris. <laughs> Um, I think, like... I don't know, like... Va- sorry, sorry. No, no, no. Like, like Van Beerendonk level rave of, like, crazy fucking... Like, actually do this crazy rave and, like, tiny shorts and, like, I don't know, lace and wigs and, like, like really absolutely madly surreal, I think. It can just be pushed. Okay, dokie. Rob? 
I think, uh, I feel like we're about to go into the next chapter, and I think that's maybe what some of us have been discussing, is this moment is at its peak and we're all a bit bored of it, like this kind of 90s, yeah, the ironic, 90s, let's normal. get over the 90s, it's a bit, guys. <laughs> well, it's not I yet. feel like it's wearing thin, <laughs> so I'd love to see. I mean, I think it's, it's true of Martine, I think it's true of Raph, I think it's true of Fiers, where they seem a little bit in a holding pen and we're waiting for the, someone to push into the next, like, whoa moment. Yeah, yeah mm. you're so right. I'm hoping that's going to yeah. be Yeah, I'm in unison with that. I think that this is the kind of, this is her kind of, yeah, in her bed and kind of allowing everyone to observe her in her space and announcing that. And that I'm really excited about what the next iteration is. And I feel like, I think she doesn't go quite deep on it. Mm. Perhaps with some lace. Perhaps with some lace. I mean, I do like a little bit of lace. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I agree with you guys. I think like she's clearly with this collection kind of consolidated quite nicely mm. this chapter of her career. Um, and yeah, it's a look that's maybe reached saturation point. Um, so it, I'm just intrigued to see where she goes next. Mm. I'm just intrigued to see where she would go naturally. I guess it's like uh, one of the things about following the journey. Like, um, I don't know, for me, she always manages to find interest and put your attention somewhere where you didn't think. So I'm just yeah, curious and excited to see where she's going to take us next. So we're all very eager and waiting with bait breath for the next year. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, thank you guys so much for coming on and chatting to us about Martine. Very much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>